Hi guys, I'm Harrison Brink and today we'll be cracking atomic structure. Now this is basic chemistry, elementary chemistry, the foundation. So if at all you need to pause the video and rewind it as many times as you need, just to get the gist of it, please do because you're going to need this. This is what we're going to be building on from now onwards. So first of all, what is an atom? Well, an atom is the basic building block of matter. It is the smallest part of an element that can exist. And we say that it is made up of three subparticles. And these subparticles are the protons, neutrons, and the electrons. The protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus, while the electrons are found in the orbitals. Now, the other thing that you need to know about our protons, neutrons, and electrons is the relative mass and, of course, the relative charge. Now, the protons and neutrons have a relative mass of 1, while the electrons have a relative mass of 1 over 1840. This basically means that protons and neutrons are relatively the same in terms of their size and mass, while the electrons are significantly smaller, so small that we normally leave them out of the calculations of the mass. The relative charge, on the other hand, protons have a relative charge of plus one, Neutrons have a relative charge of zero or nil, while electrons have a relative charge of negative one. So you guys need to be able to remember these numbers. They typically come in handy in terms of your paper one material, your multiple choice. The other thing that you need to know is just a couple of terminologies which include the atomic number or the proton number and this is the number of protons that are present in an atom. The other thing that you need to know is the mass number or the nucleon number, which is sometimes called the relative atomic mass. And it is defined as the number of protons and neutrons in an atom. So there are a few things that you need to note. And that is, when you take the mass number and subtract the proton number, when you take the mass number and you subtract the proton number, you will always get the number of neutrons available in an atom. The overall charge of an atom is basically zero because the number of protons and the number of electrons always equal each other in terms of an atom. That is also a statement that tends to um, confuse people in terms of paper one. So the overall charge of an atom is zero, while the overall charge of ions can either be a positive or a negative. So we are going to also go through atomic notation. The notation that we are going to use is this one over here, where A is the mass number and B is the proton number and X is the symbol. Now I know for BGCSE this is what we are going to use according to your syllabus. However, for IGCSE students, they tend to flip these numbers, so just keep note of that. So once you know this, the expectation is that you can be able to use it in terms of calculations or you can be able to represent any information of any element in this format. After that we are going to talk about the electronic configuration. An electronic configuration is basically how many atom how many electrons sorry this is how many electrons are present per shell or per orbital. Now the first shell can only occupy a maximum of two electrons while all other shells following that can hold up to a maximum of eight. 
So the expectation is that you guys should be able to write the electronic configuration of element 1 all the way up to element 20. So if we take element 20 for example, which is calcium, you should be able to write that it is 2.8.8.2. When you add these up, they should give you 20. Basically what this information is saying is that the first shell has 2 electrons, the second one has 8, the third one has 8, and the last one has 2. So, based on the number of shells that you can get, that will determine which period an element falls in. And based on the number of valency electrons, valency electrons, we are talking about the electrons in the outermost shell, that will determine the group in which an element will fall in. So the outer shell electrons or the valency electrons are basically the ones that are responsible for the chemical reactions. They're the ones that take part in the chemical reactions and they give the element its chemical properties. So basically, all elements that have the same number of valency electrons have the same or similar chemical properties. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is that we should be able to note that the aim of any chemical reaction is for the atoms to attain what we call noble gas electronic configuration or noble gas arrangement. This basically means that atoms will gain or lose electrons just so that they can have a total of eight electrons in their valency shell or in their outermost shell. So we decided to add one more thing, which is isotopes. So isotopes are basically atoms of the same element with the same proton number but different mass numbers. What this means is these atoms have the same number of protons in the nucleus, however they have different numbers of neutrons in the, in the nucleus. So Basically, that means that the mass number or the overall mass number will be different. And according to your syllabus, you should be able to give examples in terms of hydrogen, carbon, and chlorine. In terms of hydrogen, we have hydrogen 1, 2, and 3. In terms of carbon, we have carbon 12, 13, and 14. And in terms of chlorine, we have chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now because atoms or elements tends, tend to have isotopes, what happens is we usually calculate the relative atomic mass of them looking at the abundance of each isotope in the environment and then we use that calculation as the overall or the standard. So in case one of you have been, has been wondering why we have chlorine as chlorine 35.5 in the periodic table, it is because all those numbers that you see on the periodic table have actually been calculated and the reason why we have chlorine 35.5 is because there's chlorine 35. There's chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And when we do the calculations, they gave us 35.5. Now you can find the equation of how to calculate the relative atomic mass in your clicking chemistry revision book, or I will attach these notes and exercises to this video so that you can access that. That is basically it for this topic. This topic was just an introductory topic just to get you aware in terms of 
the terminologies and just the basics and foundation that we are going to use from now onwards. Thank you.